Joining me to continue our conversation about free speech in sport is Associate Professor of Sport Management, Dr. Dehi Kwok. Dr. Kwok, thanks for, for joining me. Thank you for having me. So, you know, we this whole notion of free speech and sport, what it means, is it appropriate? There's so much debate, lots of perspective, lots of, of, of different takes on this issue. Tell me whether or not you think sport is a viable platform for social and political activism. I think sport is a powerful uh, platform for politics um, and even international relations. I want to talk about the, uh, from a global perspective, uh, 2018 PyeongChang Winter Olympics just ended um, last week in South Korea. Um, with escalating uh, threats and concerns over uh, security over peninsula, and the two Koreas uh, worked together to to uh, to form a joint uh, women's hockey team and walk uh, walking under the marching under the same flag, which uh, helped set the mood for reconciliation uh, between the two Koreas and particularly with uh, between North Korea and the U.S. And even the uh, the president agreed to sit at the table with the uh, leader of. Uh, North Korea, whether if it's going to eventually happen or not, mm -hmm. but we uh, can see that how the Olympics, uh, the sport, was a stage to uh, help alleviate some of those tensions. So mm -hmm. from a political standpoint, I think it does provide a strong and powerful platform uh, to, to for, for those uh, political agendas. And coming back to your question about whether sport is an appropriate uh, platform for uh, activism. I think it is, uh, certainly, uh, and, and I, I see it because give, given the um, huge uh, media exposure opportunity, uh, it, it, it raises, uh, it has an enormous potential to raise awareness of those uh, social issues. So I think that uh, it, it can be a very powerful uh, platform. And, but uh, at the same time, um, we see that there may be some repercussions uh, in, in, in engaging in social activism. There may be some criticisms or, or, uh, or backlash or, or um, opposition from, from fans, from media, and from other stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk more about fans mm -hmm. and, you know, and how this whole notion of free speech affects fa uh, fans. You're a sport consumer researcher. Mm -hmm. You are a sport fan expert. But before we get into the element of free speech and how it affects fans, share with our audience, why do fans go to sport events? Like, what is the motive for being there? <laughs> I'm sure it's not to see political activism. Absolutely. Right? Well, uh, uh, we, we watch and view sport for entertainment. I uh, want to have fun, uh, have a good time. Uh, you, and especially if you're following a team, then you want your team to win. And you want to see your team or athletes su uh, succeed in the field. Um, so I, I see the entertainment being the huge motiva uh, motivation for, for, for fans to attend the game or view, view sport, whether it be you know, um, having a good time with your family or significant others, or it could be just escape from, uh, from your work or uh, just for the sake of having, um, enjoy, enjoying the time uh, during the moment. So with that said, mm -hmm. if they're really there for entertainment, they're there to escape, you know, the woes of everyday life. They're there for cathartic release. We know that some fans are not taking too kindly to seeing this, these political, you know, mm -hmm. expressions mm -hmm. in sport. Your research also focuses on how fans react um, to athletes' transgression mm -hmm. and how they react mm -hmm. to act to situations mm -hmm. that they perceive to be immoral or mm -hmm. acts of civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. So. Share with us what your research has revealed relative to how fans react to athlete civil disobedience. Because many of them perceive kneeling during the national anthem to be an act of civil disobedience or a transgression. What has your research revealed about how they respond? That's an interesting question to understand how consumers respond to a transgression or mm -hmm. something that is not expected uh, uh, from, 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 a, uh, from an athlete uh, endorser. So we, some of the studies that we looked at uh, was what were the, some factors that influence how fans respond to those type of transgressions, mm -hmm. whether it be a field, on field uh, transgressions such as a doping or using illegal uh, drugs, or off field uh, transgression, whether you're violating uh, dr drinking under influence or, or domestic violence and so forth. Um, so we found that the type of transgression matters mm -hmm. uh, to some extent. 
But at the same time, uh, the severity of the transgression perceived by consumer also matters. Uh, and, and the other uh, important aspect that we found was the level of attachment that you have uh, with a particular athlete also matters in, in how you process the uh, transgression or the scandal information about, about an athlete. And another uh, important uh, internal process that we found was more reasoning, mm -hmm. uh, which I'll uh, get to uh, uh, in detail later. But uh, it, it really depends on how fans process the scandalous information to make the judgment whether it is acceptable or unacceptable. Yeah. So I wonder, it, it creates this unique dynamic. So mm -hmm. if an athlete is kneeling mm -hmm. during the anthem and fans perceive that to be a transgression mm -hmm. because they don't think it's the American thing to do. It's mm -hmm. been cast as anti-American, anti-veteran mm -hmm. because there's the whole notion of free speech mm -hmm. in this particular venue. So how do they respond? Do they stop supporting the team altogether? Mm. Do they support the team but just not root for the athlete? Like, what are the responses to these particular transgressions? Right. Um, for the kneeling during the national anthem, I, I think those who oppose protest uh, uh, athletes who are kneeling during the national anthem sees standing up for the national flag as has a far greater value or is far more important than than the the, the issue that the the social injustice issue that the players are trying to trying to get across so that case uh, from based on the research that we uh, have done those fans who oppose the protest might might engage in uh, in a uh, the, the reasoning process that the standing the kneeling during the national anthem it has something to do with the uh, performance of the athlete or try to um, um, chastise a behavior by integrating the judgments of the morality of the athlete and also the uh, per, uh, player's performance on the field. So in, 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 that's what moral coupling uh, indicates. Um, but, but it's not all fans uh, uh, oppose, oppose protests. And, and you can see some fans who support the uh, uh, the activism uh, they would easily separate the uh, the act of kneeling and the watching the game the the, the, the core the product of of, uh, of the game that the people tune into so it is it, easy, easy for for those fans to separate the uh, the action and the players performance on the field which is separate so it, it helps them to maintain their support for the athlete and for the team uh the the team versus uh athlete per se uh it, we need more evidence on, on on that aspect whether the the fans of the team will not going to support the team because of the athletes uh, expression on the social issue uh from a fan behavior standpoint i think it's, it would be very difficult for a fan to not support the team because one of a player is mm -hmm. expressing his or her ideas on a spe specific issue that is not really related to the performance on the field mm -hmm. so it would be easy for those fans to just separate the uh, issue of social activism and what's going on on the field so thereby they can continue their support for the team right, right. you mentioned earlier this whole concept of moral reasoning and, mm -hmm. and 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 i hope our audience can hear the challenges the things that the fans are trying to to balance mm -hmm. cognitively how i feel about the athlete how i feel about the behavior how i feel about the team mm -hmm. so walk us through this concept of moral reasoning and the strategies that they use to have mm -hmm. some cognitive consistency in this whole mm -hmm. complex process right right um we need to look into the uh, moral decision making literature and how things how, how people digest uh, when, when you receive some of this counter attitudinal information so you you like the athlete but the athlete engages in immoral action so what 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 people do so you your favorite athlete engages in an immoral or unethical behavior and you want to uh, maintain your support for the athlete so in those situations, um, you are engaging in either moral rationalization or moral decoupling, mm -hmm. uh, which is called the moral disengagement processes. So wh wh when I'm, what do I mean by uh, moral rationalization is about diminishing the harm of the behavior by justifying the uh, athlete's behavior. Mm -hmm. 
for instance, well, everybody else is doing it. He or she had no choice in that circumstance or blaming the other, that type of strategy to cope with, to cope with the um, immoral action by your favorite athlete. So you're trying to justify and condone the behavior by moral rationalization. And on the other hand, moral decoupling is you chastise a behavior that action was morally wrong or was unethic, uh, uh, unethical, but at the same time, you praise athletes' performance or competency on, on the playing level. So you would say what he or she did was absolutely unacceptable, but the player is still the best in, in his or her sport. So you have just decouple the action and the performance, thereby you maintain your support for the, for the athlete. So you can imagine that if you're either engaging in moral rationalization or moral decoupling, then you would not really have detrimental effect on the sponsors mm -hmm. because they will support their athlete as well as their sponsors because you're not really um, criticizing on the, on the actor uh, in mm -hmm. those situations. But it gets uh, tricky when people engage in moral coupling, mm -hmm. which, uh, which is another moral reasoning strategy that we found in our research. It, 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 it starts when a fan negatively views the behavior of an, of an athlete and try to paint that to perceive and evaluate the athlete's performance. So all of a sudden, you're integrating the judgments of morality and the athlete's performance together. So the negative evaluation on the, uh, the immoral action is negatively affecting the performance judgment on the athlete, which has a devastating and damaging Im impact on the endorsement value and for sponsor evaluations. Mm -hmm. I want to follow up on the sponsor evaluations because we know mm -hmm. that sponsors, uh, you know, they, they comprise another group who may be affected by athletes' free speech. And mm -hmm. so talk a little bit about, you know, the whole notion of how a sponsorship agreement may be affected by athlete free speech or, on the other hand, are sponsors becoming more socially, culturally conscious, conscious so that they're embracing athletes' free speech? That's the area that we need more research mm -hmm. um, on to see how this activism really uh, have implications uh, on the sponsor's decision to whether they stand with the athlete mm -hmm. or try to uh, walk away from the athlete. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's one case with the um, Denver Broncos, um, the linebacker who supported um, the kneeling during the national uh, anthem. But as a consequence, uh, he lost a couple of endorsement uh, deals. So we see that there could be repercussions in the, um, the consequence of being in, in the endorsement capacity. Uh, some, some, I think it, it will depend on the culture and the, and the vision of the, the, the organization that is sponsoring the athlete. Are, are uh, some of the issues that are raised by the athlete, are, are they in line with the corporate organization's core values or identities, I think that would be the first starting point to make those decisions, whether you want to stay or walk away or try to um, stay, stay away from the activism. And the other issue would be um, your target audience. Uh, at the end of the day, you want to sell more of your products or services through the, um, uh, through the uh, celebrity endorsers. So does your target audience feel upset about this activism or do they really it is storing off the uh, consumers of your uh, products then you probably want to make action uh, to whether to make a statement or to to, to to clarify your stand on how you want to proceed with with this activism going on um, so I can give you a, one example with uh, uh, one of the, um, um, the female tennis player who was in charge um, with uh, using um, performance in as mm -hmm. drugs, mm -hmm. and there were some co uh, companies maintain their partnership with with the player, but uh, there's some companies uh, just walked away from mm -hmm. um, the uh, from the athlete. So even with the same transgression that we are talking about, uh, sponsors, I think they are more aware of be becoming more aware of this uh, type of issue, but uh, they make different decisions based on what their values uh, mm -hmm. align with. Uh, some of those uh, transgressive behaviors. So I will imagine that similar along the similar line with a, 
um, social activism. So are those values violate or are in line with uh, what the organization is striving for? I think that will be a de de determining factor in deciding whether they should continue or discontinue their partnership. Right. And I, I know it's a difficult decision, you mm -hmm. know, that, you know, sponsors in some regards, their participation in activism could expand their markets. On the other hand, their participation in activism mm -hmm. could allow them to, to lose some markets. So I know it's really a, a tough situation. I want to go back just a bit to talk about uh, the fan. We've talked about, you know, how athletes' behaviors affect fans, how it could affect sponsors. I want to talk about the fans just a little bit. Again, you're a mm -hmm. fan behavior scholar expert. Mm -hmm. Fans want to have free speech, right? But but some of them don't. I mean, fans say a lot of things. We've all been to sport events. We hear some of the things fans say to the athletes. So the fans seem to relish their opportunity to have free speech. But yet some of them seem to not be so eager to extend that same right to athletes. Do fans have a double standard in this regard? Like, is there a double standard going on relative to spe free speech for the fans? I mean, they want it, but they don't necessarily want to see it on the field from the athletes, but they do it in the stands, right? We see it on the stands. What are your thoughts about that? I think, I think it's a part of uh, the fan behavior. Uh, they, they want to, uh, I, I think if, if you just look into social media, uh, the, 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 the team's pages or accounts, you'll see all these different comments um, expressing their anger or or, or, or or their emotions just bluntly uh, in, in, in those uh, social media accounts. Uh, that, that, I, I think that's a part of a, a sport consu consumption culture. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when, when you see these athletes uh, being an advocate or trying to stand up for uh, certain issues, and and that's just a extension of uh, fan fan behavior, and they can they can say whatever they want. Um, I think it's just not just on the uh, um, the social activism uh, context, but uh, any any behavior uh, the uh, uh, the athlete or this uh, ath celebrity uh, athletes engages in, uh, you will get different feedback from from the audience, anyways. So I I see it as a part of uh, uh, how fans mm -hmm. consume sport uh, in this society. Right. Not necessarily just targeted on the social activism. Mm -hmm. So whether if you're doing good or bad, I think you'll get different layers of uh, the responses from, from the fan base. Yeah, I agree. I just think they feel that they have the freedom to say what they want mm -hmm. on social media. Mm -hmm. um, so they want free speech. But oftentimes mm -hmm. it seems mm -hmm. to me that they're a little bit more critical of student athletes and athletes, professional athletes mm -hmm. and coaches who also express their freedom mm -hmm. uh, relative express their freedoms mm -hmm. relative to free speech, expression, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. Um, so as we conclude here, what are some closing thoughts or call to action or anything you'd like to share mm -hmm. relative to how this notion of free speech mm -hmm. affects consumption, affects sport mm -hmm. marketing, affects the athletes? Just in your realm as a sport consumer researcher, mm -hmm. what is the impact of free mm -hmm. speech on sport mm -hmm. consumption? So from a fan behavior standpoints or trying to understand how these types of uh, social activism or free speech in uh, sport influences uh, uh, the fans, I, I think it's, it's a multifaceted phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just the, uh, the activism or free speech itself that uh, the issue uh, it matters, but it, it's how the fans perceive and also they interpret this type of um, the activism. Mm -hmm. So definitely more research need to be done on, on this uh, angle. Um, and in, in the athlete uh, endorsement marketing literature, there has been many research that looked at the transgression of, the, uh, of an athlete and how does, what, what are the implications of uh, those uh, transgressions uh, for marketers and sponsors. But there hasn't been many studies that looked at um, social activism or free speech in sport mm -hmm. and what the implications are uh, from a sponsorship or marketing standpoint. Well, I think now we just have another research idea, some mm -hmm. research we need to do, Absolutely, looking at yeah. how fans respond to this whole notion of right. free, free speech in mm -hmm. sport. And so I hope, as you understand, as Dr. Kwok has 
um, illustrated for us, being a sport fan is not a mindless activity. It's psychologically, cognitively taxing. And the way in which you know fans have to manage and juxtapose what they feel for the team and for the for the athlete is really a, a, a challenge. So Dr. Kwok, thank you so much uh, for sharing your insight relative to how free speech uh, impacts sport consumption. Thank you very much. Thank you.